Hi folks, in this lesson we're going to see how we can easily implement the material date picker component. We've already got a forms page in our example application, so we can use that to host this new component, but we will need to import the mat date picker module into the app, and we're also going to make use of the moment date adapter for our examples, so we should import this into our app module as well. This is an optional dependency, so it doesn't get installed with Material by default, but we can install it now easily via npm, and we'll need Moment.js itself as well. So now we can add both of these to our imports array. So now we can add the moment date module to the imports array. And let's also bring the date picker in from Angular Material. So let's add the markup now for a basic date picker first of all. I just want to point out that Material does have its own date implementation based on JavaScript's date objects, but this only supports the en-us date format, so the moment adapter is very commonly used instead. So there's a couple of elements here. We use a regular input, and that has the mat date picker directive added to it. And we also use the mat hyphen date picker custom element. And we give this a template reference variable, in this case, simple picker. And we link this to the input using this, this template reference variable. So let's go back to the browser now. And down at the bottom here, we can see our new date picker input, and when we click it, nothing happens. So don't worry, I haven't forgotten to import anything this time. It's not broken, it's just that we need to provide a trigger to open the date picker overlay. So there are two different ways that we can do this. We can do it in code, in the class for the component that hosts the date picker, or by using a toggle element. So let's look at how we do it in the component class first of all. So we'll need to import a couple of things here. We'll need the view child from Angular and also the mat date picker class from Angular Material. And now let's add a view child reference for the date picker. The view child decorator takes a selector for the element that we want to get a reference to. So we supply the name of the template reference variable that we added to the date picker. We'll store it in a property called picker and it will be an instance of the mat date picker. So because this is a generic type, we just need to specify what type will be inside this and we can just specify a generic date. So the fact that we're using the moment date module doesn't make a difference here. We can just specify a basic date and that's fine. So now let's add a method to show the date picker. And we just use the open method of the date picker instance that we've got in our view child picker property. So now we just need to trigger this show picker method from the UI. We can use the focus event of the input element to do that. So that should be everything that we need to do. Let's go back to the browser now. 
And this time when we click on the input, we get the date picker overlay, which appears and it looks quite attractive. The current date is highlighted. So July the 7th, 2018, and the default view is the month view. We can navigate to, to different months using these arrows here, or we can change it to a year range view instead so that we can pick any year within the range. And it then switches to year view. So we can now see all of the months in 2016. So we can choose a month and then it switches back to month view where the days of the selected month are displayed. And we can pick a date and the date that was picked will be added to the input in the default format which is EN US format here. So great, okay. Using the focus event, however, is not ideal. So maybe the click event on the input would be preferable, but in any case, there is an easier way to achieve exactly the same thing. We can use a toggle element to open the date picker instead. So let's remove the focus handler from the input. And instead we can add a toggle element. So we use the mat hyphen date picker hyphen toggle element, and we'll make it a suffix so that it is styled nicely. And we can use the for input to link it to the date picker that the toggle is for. So let's go back to the browser again. And we can see that we now get this toggle element. So we get a nice little calendar icon here. And when we click on that, then we see the date picker and we don't have to worry about focus events and handling that correctly. So we can also just freeform type into the field by default as well. But once again, if we select a date, then the value that we selected gets added to the input. So as we saw by default, the date picker opens up in month view. If we want to change that, we can configure the start view input property of the date picker. We can set that to year instead, or we could set it to multi year instead, and that would give us the year range. So let's just take a look at what the year start view looks like again. So now it opens up in this year view where we can see all of the months of the year. And let's change it to multi year now. And now by default, we get this year range instead. And it works in exactly the same way as before. So a common requirement for date pickers is to disable the input. So that people can't just type any old text in there. And we can do that by using the disabled property. So if we just add disabled to the input, then it will change the styling of the input. So we get this dotted line now, we can't click into it. And also we can't actually click the toggle icon because by default, the mat date picker and mat date picker toggle elements both inherit the disabled property of the input. So if we don't want those to be disabled, we need to tell the component about that. So now the input is still disabled, so we can't click on that and we can't type anything into it, but the toggle is now enabled and we can pick a date like did previously. So the date picker also has an alternative mode, which is enhanced for touch devices. We can enable this using the touch UI property. Now, when we open the input, it's modal, so we can't interact with the rest of the page. And we just get this kind of bigger date picker. It works in the same way. It's just much bigger, so it's easier to use on touch devices. So last of all for today, let's look at how we can change the locale of the date picker. By default, it's set to EN US. To set the locale to a specific locale at load time, we can import the mat date locale injection token from the material core module into our app module.
and then we can set it to a specific locale in the providers array. So this time we've set it to use the British date locale instead, which uses a slightly different format to the ENUS locale. So everything looks the same as before, except oh, that's a really bad date. Hang on. Okay, so now we can see that the date of the month, the 28th, appears before the month. So if it was ENUS, it would be 1-28-2016. But now because it's in ENGB locale instead, it's 28-1-2016. So in this lesson, we focused on the date picker component. We've seen how it can be easily integrated into a page. We saw how to associate it with an input element and how to use a toggle element to allow the picker to be opened. But we also saw how we can open the picker programmatically from the component class instead. We saw how to change the start view of the calendar and how to set the locale format for dates picked by the picker. We also saw how to enable the large touch-friendly version of the component. Thanks for watching.